each and every Monday. However, moved up 30 minutes because of Pacer Hoopage and Colts Roundtable Live tonight. Rick Venturi, how you doing, big fella? Hey, I'm doing good. Had a bonus. I didn't count on this day, man. I was able to get several miles in this afternoon on the motorcycle which is uh, always a bonus in October, November. Can you pop a wheelie on that bad boy? Uh, you know what? I really can, but I, you know, I think I probably better not. <laughs> <laughs> um, speaking of pop a wheelie, this offense essentially is popping a, a pretty big wheelie. It looks, it looks good. Now we always, I think we're pretty honest with the folks out there yeah, about yeah. this team right now. What, what is, what is real to you and something that can continue on? And what is more by virtue of the past two weeks competition in your opinion? Well, you know, it, it all kind of meshes together, um, and there, there's nothing like winning, John. There isn't anything like winning. What do they say? It's the great elixir. Yes. Um, and, you know, the Buffalo game was really, and I defined it as a season saver. I mean, you, you had to have that one to save it. And then I defined last week because of how the division and the ASC is shaken down and what our schedule shakes down to as, you know, the, po- the potential first step in a run in the AFC South. And I, and I mean that sincerely, and I've probably looked at every team more than anybody can think of uh, in terms of, the, of, terms of the division teams, Jacksonville and Tennessee, because they come right in a row, and I've done a lot to that. So, you know, winning a game like that, again, everything gets better, uh, particularly when you win it decisively in the fourth quarter, even though the game was tight. Uh, you know, like I said, as a Colts backer, you know, you got to be thrilled to death. I'm thrilled in that sense. Um, you know, we've had two really good offensive shows in a row. I mean, uh, legitimate big time, and, and I'll get into that. Uh, as an analyst, you know, I see the game as a tale of two cities. I see a terrific offensive output, and I see a real subpar, unacceptable defensive output. But we scored enough points, and we did enough things to win it. But in terms of where our offense is going, and I think I, I said this to you off air, you know, we talk all the time text-wise. Um, you know, this team is on the, on, I think, on the cusp of being very, very good offensively if they can keep their skies healthy. What we've seen now in, uh, in now 10 quarters of football is we've seen number one, which we have never seen here for a long, long time, certainly since I've been back the second time is we have seen an offensive line that is playing with cohesion. It's playing technically good. It is playing physical and athletic. And I can't say enough about what Frank Reich and Nick Sirianni and Coach Goog is doing with the offensive line because it is very they – are, they are really putting together not only just execution – but they're very creative. Most people think in terms of creativity with the passing game, and there's a lot there, and it's more obvious to you. But they're running zones, powers, counters, uh, you know, open tosses. Uh, last week when the game was on the line, they were running the RPOs. When Doyle had that great game, and I'm not going to take anything away from Jack, but you've got to give credit to the calls and how they ran those RPOs because, I mean, they got him, and he was absolutely wide open. And that was done in RPOs when the game was on the line. But, you know, these guys have done a terrific job uh, with the running game, uh, putting it in the right spot. The offensive line has blocked good. I don't think that we have to be reserved in terms of calling Mac a top back. Mac now is a top back. He's the guy that I had hoped that this was what we were getting from South Florida. you know, and I think I give a lot of credit to Tom Rathman in terms of getting him really headed north and south. That was the thing he had to do this year. Uh, he is ripping it through there. He's not just bouncing like he did a year ago. And I saw a couple runs where he's physical, lower the shoulders, spin out. I mean, this guy is running, and plus he's a potential, you know, he's a potential big game breakout every play. You saw the 49-yarder Sunday with just a crack. And so when you combine those two things, you know, the biggest thing I told you this morning, the biggest thing with Mac is Mac has to stay healthy. That's the one thing, you know, we've only had him for a year and a half, but, you know, that's been the biggest issue. But if he stays healthy and the line continues to block, and to me there's no reason in terms of the run blocking 
that this isn't going to this is not going to change. The pass blocking we'll always have to see when you play elite guys, but as far as the run blocking, that shouldn't change. And so when you have that, what you have now is you have Luck playing a totally different game, you know, as opposed to throwing 121 balls in four days like he did earlier. You know, he's throwing 24, 25 balls, uh, you know, a, a game. He's throwing at a real high percentage. He's totally in control. The protection in the last, what is it, 156 plays without a sack. But it's even better than that. I mean, they're not. there's not many quarterback hits. We've never gone through a period like this. We've never seen this. Um, and, and really, the pocket isn't being pinched. I, I had, I kept laughing to myself. I said, "That jersey is clean, man." Like we used to say in the old days when we played in poor conditions. I mean, I've never seen Andrew have this kind of support from a blocking standpoint. And what you're seeing with him, I think, is him at his very best. And, and I said this last week after the game, and now I've seen it two weeks in a row where when you watch him, like from my standpoint as an analyst, when I watch him, I see a guy who knows now he doesn't have to make every play. You know, he, he, can, he can extend it. He can run out of bounds. He can extend it. He can throw one away if it's not there. He does not have to force the action because he's in much, much better situation. Now, what he's done a good job of, it would, uh, the only thing that we did poorly Sunday – were the penalties. We had those holding penalties. But what Luck did a great job of is on third down, he got us out of those jams. We overcame those penalties. Most of the time, you don't overcome those kinds of holding penalties. Holding penalties normally absolutely destroy you. And his ball placement has been great. Uh, you know, so those two things, the third thing that has been there from the beginning is the, is this tight end miracle. I mean, the 12 touchdowns now – uh, un- incredible. Our tight ends get so involved when we get close to the goal line from about the 30 in. Uh, Ebron, you know, what does he have now? Seven, Swope, and then, you know, Allie Cox with the circus catch. Um, and so, you know, our tight ends have certainly validated what we thought, if not validated it, I think validated it plus that it is the strength of our football team and getting Jack back you know, and having Jack make critical plays uh, down the stretch only enhances that. I mean, it, it would be hard for anyone to look around the league and say that they have a collection of guys as good as that. It's just not, they're just not there. I mean, I see them week after week after week. It's not there. You know, Hilton, even though he always gets the tough coverage, he's playing good. He got us a big play. I think Inman helps us. I think In- Inman is the first guy. You know, he was a 58 catcher at San Diego. He's a guy with some speed and size. He isn't a perfect panacea for it all, you know, but he's certainly a complimentary guy. I really loved the way he caught the ball, um, and he can run. So, you know, this offense is just getting better and better and better, and there's really there really isn't any reason that it can't continue to grow um, they're probably one, you know, big quality receiver opposite Hilton away from being, you know, real, real good. But right now, I mean, they are they are hitting on all cylinders. And I, I say this from a technical standpoint, not from a rah-rah or cheerleader standpoint, because that I will never be. But Frank is also doing a terrific job. I mean, on offense, we are creative in everything we do, we we give people problems. We're stressing them. I mean, you know, and, and and really not enough praise probably was given to those guys when they were playing with the JV team, and at least at least staying competitive. But now the weapon utilization from you know personnel groupings to formations to movement to how they're using guys to how they're stressing defenses, and then the execution with it, which gives it a practical you know, a practical standpoint has been absolutely terrific. Uh, you know, uh, Andrew has been very, very accurate. He'll occasionally have a bad throw like everyone. But overall, his ball placement has been really, really good. So, you know, from an offensive standpoint, you, we just we have to be thrilled to death. You know, two outputs, what is it, 42 in both games, the last two games. You know, and now from an offensive standpoint, um, you know, I would say this. I don't think there's any asterisk by the Buffalo game. I think the Buffalo defense is solid. 
um, you know, it, it, it is a solid defense, and to rip it apart like we did, uh, I think is real good. The, I expected a big day against the Raiders. I, I said this on your show a week ago. It's the worst Raider defense that I've ever seen in my lifetime, which is a long, long time. Uh, very, very poor talent-wise, really struggling to put it together, no continuity, you know, don't, don't tackle very well. So I wasn't, I wasn't totally shocked that we were able to really take it to them. But you don't apologize for who you play. You know, you go out there and you, you take a bad team and you destroy it with your offense, and that's what we did. And so, you know, I just I really like that way they're going. I really like, you know, and I'm very critical here. I'm, I, I really like what Frank and that offensive staff is doing. I mean, I, 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 I agree. I, Here's how I notice. I mean, compared to what we were used to seeing offensively, it's stinking night and day, Rick. I mean, it is so night and day watching well, what they do now. To you. And now we're getting the results, and it is night and day. But think of what it would have been when we were playing without all these guys. I mean, I doubt that Andrew would have made it to midseason. Yeah. But Frank was willing to go and throw and use the passing game because we couldn't run it without Mac. The offensive line was in shambles at tackle. He had to throw quick rhythm because we couldn't hold it. You know, but they were able to put good game plans together and at least keep luck, you know, keep luck alive, keep him going. And now all of a sudden with a lot of weapons, you see evolution. And that's, that's what I love with coaches. And one of my big knocks on the defense is they just throw the same defense out there every week. There's no, there's no real game plan to take anybody away. There's no variance. They're never creating any problems. And that's just hard for me to watch. I mean, I coached in 27 years. And I can't, you know, if you can hit 17 straight and you can hit 36 out of 40 going into the game, I mean, you got to do something about that. That's totally unacceptable on the other end of it. And so I think you're seeing an offense that's creative, that is utilizing talent. And, you know, you're looking at a defense that's playing, you know, that was substandard the whole game. They make one play at the end you know, to ice the game, but they make one play at the end or else it's, it's well, up and, and down and, the and, field. And I do want to – I tell you what, we're going to put you on a hold. I want you to think about this because we'll, we'll go back to the good, but we do need to mix in some bad, and that was that defense until it was basically nut-cutting time at the end of the game yesterday when they stepped up big. But I want to get into why that defense, for the most part of that game, looked the way that it did. So, Rick, you're on hold. We'll come back. Most important hour of the week is right here. Moved up 30 minutes. We go until 5.30. Rick. Venturi back with coach after this. It's all things Colts with former coach Rick Venturi. The ride with JMV on FM 1075 and 1070 The Fan. Let's bring Rick back right here and talk about the defense yesterday on the Andy Moore Automotive Group Hotline. Rick Venturi joins us. It seemed like that John Gruden for most of that game was a couple of steps ahead. Why? Well, John just took us to school, but this this isn't the, the first time. I mean, you know, if you look back, other than if you if you filter out the Buffalo game, you gave up 37 against the Texans, you gave up 38 Patriots, 42 Jets, and now 28. And what you're giving up is your percentage of passes is so high. When we went into this game, the last three weeks, the last three weeks going into this game, in the first. 40 throws of the combined first of the first combined 40 throws in the last three weeks going into this game to start the game. This is how you start the game. The opponent quarterback, whether it's Anderson, Brady, or whoever, has completed 36. 36 out of 40. Okay. Then you go into this week, and what John did is he knows this. Everybody knows this. They play the same defenses week in and week out, and they keep talking about execution. You know, and we got to play better technique. That's like Custer going into the little bighorn and saying we'd have been just fine if it hadn't been for the Indians. You know, I mean, you, eventually you have to self-check this thing. I mean, you know, Carr is struggling like all get out, you know, and he basically goes 75% <laughs> completion and he hits 17 in a row. And basically it comes down to playing that, you know, those same things, that area zone, you know, week after week, with some form of cover two, some form of cover three, but it's all area zone. Then they'll play a little man free, and they usually show that, and then an occasional fire zone. So basically teams come out, and they look at you, and they know it. And so what teams have basically begun to do 
is just simply move your linebackers. So you do that, first of all, you throw very quick, quick rhythm, uh, get the ball out really quick. Um, those quick screen games, you see everybody, the Jets did it to us, the Patriots did it to us, John came out and did it to us. You know, and that kind of stuff just gets you on your heels. You end up second and three all day. I call it concession yardage. There's so many check downs and throws that are just, you know, five-yard completions, and they and they keep going. I mean, guys make a lot of tackle because they make a ton of tackles after the guy catches the ball. You know, and then they move you. They move you with play action and hit in behind you. And then what John did a really good job is faking no quick screens. All of these things are meant to move zones. And when you're not playing any combination coverages and matchup coverages, all of a sudden when you're just playing zone, then the area between the linebackers and the defensive backs, when you move the linebackers with some kind of action, gets humongous. I mean, they had four plays over 25 yards, three touchdown passes in the seams, you know, just simply because they moved the linebackers. So you're exactly right. Um, you know, I think, you know, Gruden took him to school with a very average team. Um, for him, though, his defense was just so bad that he, yeah. couldn't, he couldn't hang in there. Uh, you know, but again, I mean, they, they went up and down the field um, with a team that was 28th and has really struggled on offense. But, uh, yep. you know, this is what we're seeing. And, uh, you know, and, and again, you, you know, you can, you, can, you can wash it all away with a win, or you can begin to say, if we're going to make this run, you know, we're going to have to somehow defend people. I mean, we're going to have to take some things away. We're going to eventually have to choke some receivers off. Rick Venturi with us. Here's what I want you to think about. We're going to go to a break, come back, have a long time to talk coming up after the top of the hour here. I want to talk about the rookies along the offensive line and why the tight ends have worked so well for this team offensively, no matter the name. And then I want to get a little bit into the AFC South, which has become, with the exception of Houston, I guess, some sort of a a dumpster fire right now. Rick, stay on hold. We'll come back with that. All the questions you needed answered right here. The truth behind where the Colts are right now. Rick Venturi, other side, next. We rejoin him. It's all things Colts with former coach Rick Venturi. The Ride with JMV on FM 107.5 and 1070 The Fan. Colts Roundtable live, bottom of the hour. Matt Taylor, Chris Ballard is going to be a part of that bottom of the hour. So we bail here at 5.30. Pacers, Blazers after that tonight at 6.30. Back to Rick Venturi right now. The tight ends are working so well and so incredibly utilized in this offense because, question mark. Well, you know, I think, first of all, they're very athletic, Okay. Um, you know, basically we knew when we got Ebron that we had a guy that really had special athletic talents. You know, there were some consistency issues. He seems to have cleaned them up for the most part, but he has been uh, very much a guy who gives people trouble. He's always ha- he's always gotten the better of linebackers and safeties, and so it was just really a matter of getting him structured and making sure he wasn't the only guy. Um, you know the you know with Swope the the experiment over the years uh, has paid off. He's another guy that's a really good athlete. Again, another ex basketball player who can get into space. These guys are all matchup problems. And then Ali Cox is a really interesting guy. You know he made the tremendous catch, which is the Sports Center special. But I'm going to tell you, there's a couple unsung heroes, and of course getting Doyle back really helps. But a couple unsung heroes on the running game, and they are tight ends by uh, by position, and that is Ali Cox has actually did a pretty good job Sunday. I mean, he, you know, he's a bigger guy, big body guy, and they have taught him how to block. I mean, he has actually he he has contributed to this running game. And the other guy that's done a real quiet job that you just don't ever hear of, but he does a lot of the dirty work. And it allows them to play three tight ends at times. You know, there were several situations where they they had what I call 13 personnel, which is three tight ends, is Hewitt. Hewitt's a guy who goes in there and blocks those whams and gives them, you know, Jack has had to do that in the past, but if you can relieve him of that and let him be that tight end, it's it's amazing. And then I think that the fact that Frank has utilized those guys so well 
And I think Hilton come, coming back m- means all the difference in the world. Because when you have Hilton, he's going to get – he is going to get the best cover guy, or he's going to get the rotation. So now you're automatically working back inside on somebody, back inside on an inferior talent. And I think Frank has moved those guys around. He, he He's just done a marvelous job with formations and personnel groupings and keeping the pressure on the defense. I mean, some of the criticisms I have of the of the defense there in that segment before, it's just the opposite on offense. We come out and attack people. I mean, we stress people. We create matchups that are monsters for them. And, of course, our, our, our tight ends have really, uh, you know, they've benefited from it. And I also think that what started out as a negative has become a, a, a positive. When we, when we went into the season, we did not have – and in a way, still don't. Maybe Inman is. I don't know. We have not. We don't have that big bank board receiver in the red zone. We don't, like Ty is very good, but he's not a big fifty-fifty guy. <clears throat> None of our other guys really are. So, what happens when we get down in there? When we want to create that bank board situation, that fifty-fifty situation, it's much better to do it with the tight ends because of their range, their girth, and obviously now. What has happened over time, and sometimes you lose people, and it can be a blessing if you can get through it, is Andrew was forced now to get more confidence in those tight ends. And now, you know, where once it was just Doyle, it's those other guys. And one thing I want to say about the Doyle thing, because I tell you, you have to really know this game to understand what happened on this last drive and to really have the appreciation, the critical drive, was when the game was 28-28 and we had to go the length of the field to go to 35. And three of those plays, three of those plays in that drive were two of them were RPOs and one of them was a zone read option. And unless you're really looking at the game, they just look like slant passes to Doyle. But what, what happens there, and we hadn't used a lot of them during the season, we got what we call a trips formation with Doyle on the inside, but loose, spread. So they run, they have a zone call. The line blocks zone to the left, okay, to the left or in some cases to the right if Doyle's. They, they run the zone away from Doyle. And Luck has the option. If he sees that Doyle has that opening to the inside because those linebackers are running, he doesn't go through with it. He just, that's the RPO. That's the run pass option. He just takes it and fires the slant to Doyle. So basically, the scheme, the scheme ended up being perfect for Doyle. I mean, he didn't have to beat anybody. He just had to run his slant, and he was wide open because it was an RPO. They did it two times in a row. The first two chunk plays, one was to the right, one was to the left, or RPOs, and then the touchdown was a zone read. In other words, uh, Andrew was coming off, of the, off, coming off the fake, and he was going to run it, but he's going to run it, but he has the option if he gets pressure in his face – to throw the ball out to the flat. And so he pulled it and threw the flat, and then Jack was wide open. But then Jack, to his credit, did a really good job of getting it into the end zone at the very end. But those were, I mean, when you're a guy like me who loves the game and studies the intricacies of the game, I tip my hat to Frank and Sirianni on those calls. So Rick Venturi on the Andy Moore Automotive Group Hotline segment you have to hear each and every week on a Monday right here. The one thing I didn't like off it, the T.Y. Hilton play, that fade to the corner, I think they need to take that out of the playbook, even though he got held on that play. But still, it just doesn't seem like that that thing's anywhere near work. No, the, best thing, the best thing you can do with T.Y. In the, in the red zone is give him a little inside option, some kind of where he has a two-way go, where he can get back on the quickness. He, he is not as effective a red zone receiver as he is out on the field. Where T.Y. is most effective – is when you get the protection, which we now are getting. We now are really getting. And you start running the play action, and we hit him on that deep post, which was a big play, a big critical play, um, the big chunk play down the middle. And, you know, there, you know, people are defending him. But, you know, now in the past we, just, we would be paralyzed when they took Hilton out of the game. And now we're establishing weapon after weapon. And that's why that running game, I mean, 200-plus, two games in a row, that is just amazing in the NFL. That, that, that's really just amazing. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, all those things are coming together for us, and that's why there's no reason to believe, you know, particularly with the scheme we're running, there's no reason to believe that we're not going to keep rolling. 
So Rick Venturi with us. Speaking of not rolling, it's basically everybody but the Texans. Yeah. And I, yeah. We're not going to go into great detail about the Texans or where they got their kickstart because yeah. <laughs> we could. Uh, we both were on the same. I think we're on the same thought. Oh, three. I yeah. know. <laughs> uh, we were, we're, I think we're both still right there, and we may have more to talk about further down the road. And, again, hopefully we do. But right now it's still kind of, eh, whatever. But uh, not to us. Anyway, the rest of the division. And what's gone so haywire across the board? All the, the negatives that we thought could, could happen to Jacksonville seemingly has taken place. Well, let me go from the top to the bottom because even Houston, who is playing really well, they suffered a severe blow losing Fuller for the season. Fuller was on top of his game, and the quarterback had great faith in throwing the ball deep to Fuller. And what Fuller does that the average guy doesn't understand is he, he doesn't allow you to double Hopkins. And so now without Fuller, people can go back and double that and look for their offensive production to really, really fall off. Fuller was coming into his own, and that loss of Fuller really hurts them. So if you want to look at the bright side there, you can. Uh, the rest of them, uh, I watched, I've watched all the games, almost every game on Tennessee and Jacksonville. And I'm just amazed. I'm amazed at both of them. Both of them, you know, one was in the Final Four, one won its first playoff game. These were teams that were supposed to be one, two um, in the in the in the division, uh, and supposed in you know even I thought Jacksonville would be in that Final Four and would be a, a player even though they have Bortles. But what's been shocking to me, John, is how their Jacksonville defense has been pushed around. Uh, you know, I watched it again yesterday. I mean, they got pushed around by the Eagles week after week after week. They are not playing even close. It's almost <laughs> – I know this sounds cra- – their defense is almost unrecognizable from a year ago when it was so dominating, when it just dominated you. And they could play – you know, they could play the quarterback handoff, you know, run the option, throw a few passes – you know, win the game 10-9 to nine and have seven sacks. They don't even look close to that. Their defense, I don't know, and now there's, there's trouble in paradise there. Uh, they didn't live with success very well. Um, Bortles is what he is, not very good. Uh, if you take certain things away from him, which we have never done, I hope this staff tries. We've never done it. We've never played well against him. But, you know, he is a guy that really is not very good but without a great defense. Now, the one thing that they will probably get back, uh, they will probably get Fournette back for our game. You know, they're certainly hoping to have him back for our game, which could give them a little bit of a boost. Maybe their running game improves. But they're a, they're a phone booth run team, which I think, you know, really, really helps us. You know, and then when you look at Tennessee, I mean, they're second to the last. They're like 30th on offense. Um, You know, they're not, you know, Henry looks non-existent. The guy that's playing good for him is Deion Lewis, the guy they got from the Patriots. Now, he's playing well. Uh, Mariota, Mariota's playing with his legs, but he looks indecisive in the pocket. Uh, Their offensive line, which we thought was a strength, although I never thought it was a strength if they didn't play from being ahead. You know, they've had all kinds of issues, all kinds of sacks, um, their defense is statistically looks good, but it doesn't knock you out on tape. So, yeah, this thing is totally up for grabs. Then you throw in the Giants, the Dolphins, and the Cowboys out of conference. And, I mean, really, this this eight games are all games that you can make a run. You know, I, I've always thought, John, and, you know, you've heard me talk about it, that this emotionally, from an emotional standpoint, the third quarter of the season is everything because it's it's where teams make your move. Houston either separates from the pack or the Colts put themselves back in position in December. It's a it's the movement area of the team. When you get to December, motivationally, it takes care of itself because if you're in the hunt and you're ready to go, there's nothing going to slow you down. You're going to, you know, that that kind of that motivation sets itself, but it's this is the critical month, and of course, I thought that the Colts started it last week because of their bad start. But they, I thought that had to be a step last week. But this is, you know, you're in a ball game now with a lot of confidence on offense. 
Um, you know, and you got to feel like you've got momentum going into this thing. Everybody in the conference has three wins except Houston. Houston got a gift from us. Again, losing Fuller, there's nothing that special about them. And our non-conference games are are more than winnable. I mean, so, you know, I think there's every reason that going in with momentum uh, to be optimistic. Uh, I think our offense has probably come even better than I thought it would be. I thought it could be pretty good. I, I think it has a chance to be real good. So Rick Venturi is on the Andy Moore Automotive Group hotline. Switch the defense really quick. Darius Leonard had the defensive play of the game for the Colts at the end of that one yesterday. He had the that is, only that is, defensive play yeah, of the game. Yeah, the only one. It, it, um, and then that's clearly what was no, necessary. I mean, but you, you talk very... about great instincts for a rookie guy. He just continues to wow really week after week getting through this, this rookie campaign. He, he makes wow plays. He is a he is a guy that has great he has great space ability. He can run. He runs so he can run so much faster than you think he can. With all that range and that length of body, he can he can get out and get his hands on the ball and strip the ball. He he can do that all in the pass defense. He's really outstanding, and he's good on long-range plays. He made the the play at the end to ice the game. It was 35-29. They needed a play there, uh, and he came over and made an individual play to end the game. There's no question about that. But he didn't play that well during the game, if you want to be truthful about it. But he is a guy that is a playmaker. He makes those kind of plays. He makes them consistently, and it's it's really amazing um, you know, that he's able to do that. So, you know, hopefully you can teach him to play the run a lot better when they're running at him. Doesn't take on blocks very well. But, you know, again, great space player and a great play at the end, and he's made them consistently. So it's something that we now certainly expect from him. I, I got a listener named Bruce that wants to know what you've thought about Ture as a rookie so far defensively. Well, you know, he flashes – and in, in, in I think there's a good upside. Uh, I thought he was non-existent Sunday. Uh, you, know, they, you know, they did, <laughs> I mean, really amazing for an offensive line that was just putrid coming into the game. Uh, we got no sacks. Uh, we got no quarterback hits. But, see, that's what happens when you concede balls so quick. When that ball, you know, when you're not, you know, when you're not covering anybody quick coming out of there, they can just get that ball out quick, and it really nullifies your rush. And we've seen that in three out of the last four games. I I think Toure has a really good upside. I think right now he's one dimensional. He's a rusher. He's a he's a designated pass rusher. Uh, I don't think that he plays very good at all in the running game. I think if you put a tight end over there, uh, you can block the hell out of him. But I think that. He definitely has rush skills uh, with an upside to, I think, be pretty damn good over there. It's uh, Rick Venturi on the Andy Moore Automotive Group Hotline. What else has impressed you uh, about, you know, yesterday was not a bright, shiny day without question defensively for the young guys, but young guys all the way around, including Naheem Hines, who had some moments offensively. Well, that's who, you know, I think, you know, that that's the kid that really has come around. He's really – He's quietly done a really good job. You know, he, we, we had high hopes for him uh, in the offseason when we drafted him, and then in the preseason practices, I mean, he was really he, – he looked really good. We thought we really had something, and then he just struggled in the preseason. But to his credit and the coaching staff's credit, they have pulled him out of it, and he really has done a good job. He hasn't given us necessarily the big runs we thought, but I'll tell you what he's done better than I think people thought is he's a tough sucker. He's a very physical, you know, he's not a big guy, but he's a physical guy. He has a run in there Sunday where he hits down around that. He, and he smells that goal line in the red zone. I mean, he, he'll pop with that shoulder and spin out of there. And he is a lot. And I, and I see him on pass protection, very, very willing to throw his body in there. So, yeah, I, I've been really impressed with the young running backs, you know, and if you throw back in there, super impressed. But I think, you know, and I, I, again, I, I'm so much into coaching, and I, and I give you – my job is to give you an a in-depth, high-level coaching uh, perspective. 
And I don't think you can say enough about Tom Rathman either because I think he's taken those young kids. A couple of them have had to play when we didn't think they'd have to play. And I'll tell you what they do. They play with toughness. They really, and that was Tom. Tom was one of the toughest guys ever in the history of this league. And I think that toughness is reflected on that team. So, you know, I'm going to give the offense a five-star here in the last two weeks. Of the new coaches, first-time head coaches of the NFL, where where is uh, Frank as as far as what he has done with this team compared to some of the other guys we've been talking about? Oh, I'm thrilled to death with him. I, I, honest to God, he's the guy I wanted here. Uh, you know that. I was so against the New England thing. I was just so against it at the time. It's not a it's not a, a Monday morning after thing. Um, but I tell you what, Frank has not only he he's not only uh, you know come to my expectations, he's exceeded them. I, I like I like several things about him. Um, I think number one, he brought a real steadiness. There's not that up and down, hyperbolic one day, low the next day. Um, when we get when we win a game, it's not the greatest game of all time. He goes on to the next one. Um, you know, very good that way. I think there's a quiet accountability on this team. I don't think it's loud. I don't think you can coach NFL loud. I like the way he operates. Um, And I really had hoped that he, uh, with the help of Sirianni and those guys, would bring cutting-edge football to us on offense, and they they have. And just trust me on that. You know, I know X's and O's as well as anybody, and I'll tell you what, those guys have done a great job of creating problems, player utilization. Uh, they got luck through the tough time when there wasn't anybody there. And now the more skill they get, the more that you see them utilization, creating problems, creating stress points. And, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's turning itself into a lot of points. It's no doubt. Now, the, the issue is moving forward. The, the, the defensive thing is... <laughs> Much well, like we saw is, yesterday, Wait, is it going to be much more of this whole bend but don't break? Is, well, there is, is no, there is no other way because is, as bend as bend they got yesterday, that was kind of you know, that they, was iffy there like down somebody, the stretch. One of my buddies in the league said they certainly figured out the bend part of it. Um, I, you know, the, the thing about it is, this, the people who believe in this system, they believe in it and they don't change it. Yeah. They won't change it, so it'll be the same week in and week out. So the game almost has to come to them. They'll play real good with a two-score lead. I always pray for that two-score lead because then you can sit back in that zone and now teams have to push the ball downfield and it lets the rush have a chance. Uh, Like I said, our best friend is a two-score lead. And that was even true here in the Dungy days, to be honest with you. Um, But, you know, a couple things you have going uh, is Jacksonville right now is putrid on offense, as is Tennessee. So, you know, you got you know you 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 got some teams that are going to come to you now, and uh, you have to you have to make that go. And and I would just hope that, you know, with a few days here and with some self scout, that we would try to figure out some tactical ways to be better. Some you'd like to, you'd like to see the defensive concept be at the same level the offensive concept. I agree absolutely. So next week we're not going to have you on Monday, but we'll move you back a little bit later in the bye week next week. What we're going to do? Yeah, we'll we'll be back. I'm, I'm coming off the bye week. I should I'm say I'm going out to San Francisco for a few days, and I will be back, and we will kill it on Thursday Ooh, with yeah. Jacksonville, and we'll go back through this AFC South because I will have looked at all the tape on everybody. So can't wait for that, John. All right. Rick, thank you very much as always. Thank you, man. Rick Mangieri on the Andy Moore Automotive Group Pilot.